tomorrow morning. So that's eight and eight, 16 hours. Take away 10 hours for sleep, and it leaves six hours to write the letter. Okay, what'll I store it with? How about something like this? Dear friend, greetings from the White Mountains of New Hampshire. I'm looking down on the Valley of the Conways and looking up at Mount Washington, which was named after the first president of the United States. Uh, sounds like a postcard. Why don't I send a whole bunch of postcards along with a letter? Good idea. Anyway, I'll start right out and explain that the real reason I'm writing this letter is because we had a student council meeting at our high school last Tuesday. Student council is composed of delegates from each of the four classes in school, and we talk about things that concern the whole student body. Well, last Tuesday, we started talking about the whole world, and Mr. Davidson, our headmaster, said it doesn't make any difference where you live, the way you act toward the rest of the world is very important. Well, that started a big discussion about how we Conway kids could get closer to people around the world. It's okay to call Mr. Davidson Dave. Dave said he could get the addresses of high school students in different parts of the world if we'd volunteer to write letters to them. So I don't know who I'm writing to, and I don't know even what part of the world he lives in. I only know he's a boy, and I sure hope he'll answer my letter right away. What will I start with? Let's see. Dear friend, my name is Richard French, but everybody calls me Pee Wee, and I'm 14, and I live in Conway, New Hampshire. Funny how you can live in a town all your life and not think of anything to say about it. I mean, anything terrific or amazing. Well, why not just say what it is? Just a plain town with 2,000 population and a bunch of stores and stuff and the state highway running right through it. And I could say that Four Corners is the main part of town and mention the hotel where a lot of city people stay in the summer. Any old day in the summer, you can see them rocking on the front porch when they aren't riding around looking at scenery. I almost forgot the scenery. Let's see. What all have we got besides mountains and waterfalls and that stuff? I don't want to sound like a girl writing a lot of words like beautiful and charming. But I'd better mention that this is the North Country, and in the wintertime, we get plenty of cold weather and snow. Uh -oh, what if this letter goes to a boy who's never seen real snow? Only pictures of snow. Well, he thinks snow is the same as sugar or salt or something? I'll write that my high school science book says that snow is small crystals of frozen water. Wait a minute. I don't want the boy who gets this letter to think Conway is a playboy town with nothing but scenery. I'd better include the lumber business. I guess this was a lumber town a long time before people noticed it for vacations. Sure, if it wasn't for lumber, I guess there wouldn't be any Conway. Imagine not thinking about lumber with trees all around here. That reminds me. I don't want to forget Mother and Dad and Joyce and Whitey. Starting with Mom, what about her? I'll say she went to the same high school I go to, only she graduated before I was born. She has a job as cashier and secretary at the electric light company, and she also takes care of our house. Our house, that should get in here. White house with six rooms and a sun porch that my dad built. Dad can do all kinds of jobs. Fix car engines, plumber, carpenter, electrician. Good, too. Then my little sister, Joy. Joy stands for Joyce. She's kind of cute, sometimes. She's been kidding me about the bawling out I got the other day from dad. It wasn't a serious bawling out. Dad said I was getting lazy about chopping wood for the kitchen stove and told me I'd be a better citizen if I started out being a useful member of the family.
He wasn't mad at me, but I felt sort of ashamed. Anyway, I won't put that in the letter. Mom says Dad is an old-fashioned homebody because he likes to read his newspaper and have us all together after supper. I help Joy with her homework, and if I get stuck, Whitey helps me. Whitey's real name is Edwin French, Jr., and he's a senior in high school, a lucky stiff. Mom always practices on the piano, and boy, you always know at our house what the choir is going to sing in church next Sunday. Kids in Italy and France and all those places do the same things I do. Dave said they do. He ought to know. He was all over the map when he was in the army. He said we shouldn't think we're so different from kids in Egypt and India and all those places. Because we're not. And go ahead and write about all the little things you do. And you'll be surprised how much other kids will understand. If I do that, then maybe the boy who writes to me will include all the little things he does. What are some of the little things I do? Well, stuff like chopping wood and taking care of the heating stove in the kitchen. But that's only in cold weather, not in the summer. I'm helping Mom with the dishes and that stuff. Because all us kids at home have to help her around the house so she can keep her office job. I don't mind fooling around with dishes, but if anybody kidded me about being a mama's little helper, it might just haul off and poke somebody. Then there's the backyard. Every time I turn around, the backyard needs me. I never think about how many leaves a tree has until they all fall off. It's a lot. That reminds me. Halloween. All the little kids in our neighborhood running around on Halloween, carrying jack-o'-lanterns and scaring people, they think, dressing up in old clothes under the rag bag, putting on false faces and going around everybody's house and fooling everybody. to let them think you don't know who they are with their false faces on. Those kids are so darn funny. They guess who they are, they pretend they don't like it. But they do. Little kids sure are comical. I was a little kid once myself, so I must have acted the same way. It's embarrassing just to think about it. Boy, this letter is getting kind of mixed up. What I ought to do is just take a regular day, like Friday, and write about that. After breakfast, Joy and I feed her pony. Then Mother and Dad and Joy and I leave together in the car. Straight up Main Street to Kennett High School, where I get out. Joy gets out next, and then Mother gets out at her office up near Four Corners. And Dad drives a car to the garage where he works. Anyway, I guess that's what happens. I don't see what happens after I get out. This 
school buses come in from all the towns around Conway. And I look for Eddie Ashnault. Eddie's one of my best friends. We play hockey and baseball together. We're not always on the same team, due to the fact that he's from North Conway and I'm from Conway. The two towns are kind of like rivals. Eddie and I have the same classes together every day, starting out with the first period, which is world history. The early Greeks and Romans sure thought of a bunch of the same things we think about now. That's practically a coincidence. I wonder if the boy who gets my letter will tell me what he studies in school. I hope so. Second period Latin. No use explaining what Latin is because everybody knows what it is. Our Latin teacher is also the baseball coach. Maybe I could make a joke out of that. But I don't know what joke. Latin isn't so funny. Just talking it. And the more you study it, the more you realize how much there is to learn. Between the third and fourth periods, you can smell lunch cooking in the cafeteria down the basement. Right away, I get hungry. But it's too early to eat, so I go to fourth period. Fourth period civics. Boy, that's special. Joanna Smith sits right across the aisle from me. She read a swell essay to the class the other day all about how the different kinds of governments work in our democracy. Joanna sure is bright. And then good news. Lunch hour. I eat. Our school has its own cafeteria, and each kid pays 25 cents for a hot lunch, and the federal government pays 9 cents. I might mention how the school nurse figures out all our meals so they contain a lot of vitamins and energy. But mostly lunch hour is fun because of eating and talking to Joanna. She and I sit together in the cafeteria practically every day. Joanna and I got to be friends because of a dance at the high school, a freshman ball. I was going to miss it. Dave told me social life is pretty important. And what about learning to dance and being sociable? Well, I asked Joanna Smith to go to the dance, and right away we were special friends. My mother and dad were chaperones that night. Eddie Ashnall kept dancing with Joanna. That was okay, because he's my friend. I guess Joanna didn't think so much of my footwork. I didn't think it was so terrible. The boy who gets this letter could see some of our dances. I bet he'd wonder what the heck is going on. I wish I could tell him, but I don't know myself. After the freshman ball, I started going to Joanna's house to practice dancing. She said I need a lot of practice. That proves that women are too fussy. One time while we were practicing, Joanna's father heard the music and came in. He's a doctor in Conway. He walked up to me and said, pardon me, Mr. French, but I would like to determine whether I still understand the science of dancing. I thought he was kidding, but he actually knew how to dance. He must have learned in college. Well, pretty soon, Joanna and I started studying together at her house. Right after we started that, the school newspaper came out and said, are Joanna Smith and Pee Wee French a twosome? Oh, they sure give you a hard time in school if you just look at a girl. We study until 20 of 9. Then I leave, because my dad lays down the law about being home by 9 o'clock, except Friday and Saturday nights. Saturday night is movie night for me. If it just so happens that Joanna wants to see the show, why the two of us go together? We have a special arrangement about the popcorn. One Saturday I buy it, and the next Saturday she buys it. I think I'll ask the boy I'm writing to if he ever eats hot popcorn. Maybe he doesn't eat anything when he goes to the movies. We like the Western pictures, the bang-bangs, but we know they aren't real. 
pictures and more rooting and tooting and shooting in western part of the United States than there is in New Hampshire. But I'm getting off the subject of school. After lunch, my first class is algebra. I want to be an engineer or a dentist someday, so algebra is important. On Fridays, algebra is the last period before I go to the big gymnasium for mixed chorus rehearsal. Everybody feels happy inside after they sing, the way I do after school on Fridays. After school, there's a lot of stuff I do. Sometimes a gang of us hang around Stone's Drugstore across the street, chewing the fat about football or what the Boston Red Sox are doing. I should explain that the Red Sox are a big league baseball team in Boston. A boy in Siam might not know that if I didn't explain it. I wonder what kind of sports I'll hear about when I get the answer to this letter. If I knew where the boy I'm writing to lives, I could tell him what I already know about his country. And then I could read some books and learn a lot more about it. What if I ought to mention Sandra? I think we're getting to be special friends. I'm trying out for the freshman baseball team. I could write about that. In football, I only weigh 120 pounds, but you don't have to be a man mountain to play quarterback. Two days a week, I have a job after school, working at Allard's grocery store so I can earn my own spending money and buy my own clothes and extra stuff like a baseball glove or, or a hockey stick. When I go in the store, Mr. Allard tells me what particular thing he wants me to do. And I go back to the back part of the store where the frozen food is kept. And I put on a white apron like the regular clerks wear. I don't want the boy who gets my letter to think I'm a big shot with an important position. Mr. Allard mostly wants me to do jobs like marking the price of canned salmon on the tops of the cans and putting the cans in the shelves. Another thing I do after school, not every day, but once every four weeks about, is go get a haircut. I always go to Marsh Newton's barber shop on Four Corners. Marsh knows everybody in town. And he kids me about girls and the way I play basketball. He thinks my head is a basketball, I guess. Sometimes I get a chance to help Dad work on an engine, if he isn't in a hurry. I've got plenty to learn about engines. I could go in under after school stuff. And fishing. 
Early in June, Paul Prouty and I go trout fishing after school. I got to be a fly caster when my uncle gave me a fly rod. I don't want to pat myself on the back, but I'm one of the best casters around here for my age. pretty suddenly, like snowball fights. I can do a better job on this letter if I don't try to do it all at once. I'll write some of it in bed tonight. Now I can concentrate on some special things for this letter. Basketball nights in the winter. They're pretty special. Mom fixes an early supper for the whole family and everybody starts giving me advice about how to play basketball. Teach me about starving myself so I can play and then sitting on the sidelines for the whole game. Even Joyce kids me because I'm only a substitute guard on the varsity. I never know whether I'll get in the game or not. Whitey doesn't say much because he knows darn well that competition is pretty tough on the basketball team. First time the coach put me in a game, I thought everybody would see my knees shaking and laugh at me. But I did okay, even if I was nervous. Saturday is my favorite day. In the wintertime, Saturday is hockey day. Conway versus North Conway. play hockey, we go to North Conway Saturday morning to see the snow bunnies. They all come up from Boston on a special train for two days and go back Sunday. 
Snow bunnies is just another name for girls who get all dressed up to go skiing and then can't ski so good. They probably think us Conway kids are country hicks, but we don't care. We're allowed to ride free on the ski mobile when they go home. Skiing is swell in this part of New Hampshire. I almost forgot that. Any old Saturday I feel like it, I can ski with the guys on Kennett High School ski team. They make me go last so I won't block the trail, but I don't care. I'm not so hot on skis. I'm hotter on skates. I wish I could see the boy who's going to get this letter. Maybe I will. Someday. I better send the letter airmail so I'll get it sooner and answer it sooner. Before I finish writing, though, I'll close my eyes and think if I left anything out. Anything special or important. <laughs> <laughs> 